<laughs> hey, Wayne. Hey, Wayne. Yeah, Wayne? Yes. All right. Okay. It's on. Yeah. All right. Good evening, everyone. We're going to call the plan commission to order. Do you need wrappers? Um, so we'll start with roll call. Can I take roll oh, call or sorry, just Mayor. attendance? Sure. Uh, we'll do we'll do attendance. Uh, Mayor Devine? Here. Amanda Nowak? Here. Wayne Clark? Yes. David Roshka? Here. Kathleen Dagenhart? Here. All right. We have a quorum. We, have a quorum. we will move to item C, which will be the approval of the minutes from the December meeting. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Were there any adjustments or changes to the minutes? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? The minutes are approved. Uh, we will move on to... <laughs> Um, part D, item number two, Aspen Dental, Katie. So the, this item is for a site plan for the architectural plan for Aspen Dental. Uh, this would be a portion of the site that's currently the office max site. This is zone C4, uh, so the medical clinic use is permitted there. What's being proposed is a approximately 3,500 square foot building. Uh, they'd like to start construction in the spring and finish by August of 2020. Um, so Aspen Dental uh, will just be performing general dentistry procedures. They will be open Monday through Friday with approximately seven to eight employees and about 25 patients per day. Um, starting with their architectural plans, uh, just to go over some of the building materials. So the building is primarily made up of um, ephus, brick veneer, uh, some stone veneer along the bottom, uh, metal coping along the top, with um, metal panel awnings um, and insulated uh, aluminum windows. Some recommendations that staff have about the plans are to uh, remove ephus, which is a uh, standard recommendation from this body for new construction plans. Uh, we would also like to receive some samples of the windows to get a better idea of what that's actually gonna look like, um, <coughs> especially given you know, these renderings, the, the blue and the white contrasting um, just in, in, the, in the pattern. We wanna explore that a little further, um, hopefully reduce the spandrel windows. Um, and because this building is positioned in a site where it will be visible on all four sides, uh, we do want to see some, some window element added to the rear of the building. Uh, we're also recommending that the, the roof unit be screened. Uh, and uh, in order to comply with our you know, sign code that one of the, um, or at least the, the intent of our sign code that one of the wall signs be removed from this set of plans. Moving on to the site and landscape plans. Uh, so <coughs> the picture, uh, this is what uh, has been submitted by the applicant. And there are some constraints to how this site can be designed. Uh, the, they have a, a lease with Blaze Pizza, which is located right here, to provide 40 parking stalls within this general area of the lot. Office Max has an existing pylon sign, which they also have an agreement to maintain as long as Office Max is uh, operating. And Office Max does have large <coughs> deliveries that come in uh, that require, you know, certain turn radius uh, abilities, you know, kind of at this drive. Um, so these are all all some limitations that they are working within to get uh, this site situated. Um, one thing to note: they did. Um, include some landscape improvements over on this corner uh, for, uh, for this proposal. Um, so staff does have concerns with this existing site plan. Um, this really is kind of an outdated development model, uh, having a building in the middle of a parking lot, um, a duck in a pond as I like to call it. and. It, you know, the, the intent of our design guidelines is really to have buildings, uh, especially when they are new construction, be <clears throat> built more at a pedestrian scale, to be up against the street front, 
um, to be situated at the front of the lot. And uh, so, you know, the applicant ha has stated that, you know, because of the constraints that we discussed before, uh, it makes it really uh, challenging, potentially impossible on this site. Um, but staff would like to see some version of that plan to work through that and, and, and go through that to make sure that it, uh, that it really cannot be, happen, is not feasible um, before moving forward. <coughs> and, you know, when we think about the long-term vision of the city and of the corridor, um, we really need to be focusing on, on creating better sites uh, one by one and, and slowly transitioning uh, to a, a more pedestrian uh, and safer, safer area. Um, and so once you put a building up, it's going to be there for a long time, and so we just really want to make sure that we get it right. <coughs> Um, so, you know, this is not an actual design. This is just something I photoshopped in about 10 minutes. Uh, so moving, you know, just kind of the general concept of moving the building up towards the street front, um, we recognize that the pylon sign uh, being there prevents this building from being right at the corner, which would obviously be ideal. Um, but we'd like to, you know, if the corner is an option, try and work out some sort of frontage arrangement. Um, you know, I'm just providing, you know, so Stanton Optical is a great example of a building being built at the corner and really um, making this space feel much more pedestrian oriented. Um, <clears throat> you know, and I think even some of our older buildings have these types of qualities um, where there's, you know, some seating in the front here at Oscar, um, the Oscars. And <clears throat> so uh, the applicant has agreed to continue working with us to. Uh, try and, and show us a concept like that. Again, uh, from their perspective, it doesn't seem like a feasible option, but we do want to continue that discussion and explore it to the furthest extent possible. <coughs> so in addition to having that plan, uh, some other recommendations that we have regarding site landscaping are to uh, include a bike rack on the site, uh, to provide a phase two, as we're calling it, for lack of a better term, uh, showing improvements for the entire site. Um, you know, when we do a site landscape review, we do it for the entire parcel, not just for the portion that's being redeveloped. Um, and so while we recognize that the dental property is the current priority, uh, we want to see, at, at a minimum, you know, some of these, some of these areas be transformed into to landscaping where possible. Uh, additionally, <coughs> just showing where pedestrian connections are or are intended to be uh, so that it's safe for users who are going po potentially from one, uh, from one structure to another. And also, th uh, they are intending to record a CSM, which would divide the parcel you know, somewhere along this line, I believe. Um, and we just want a written uh, a, agreement from them that they recognize that the occupancy for the business user will not be approved until that CSM has been recorded. So this is just a summary of all of the uh, recommendations <coughs> that we just discussed, um, as well as the other typical uh, recommendations that come along with it, the estimated cost of landscaping uh, and the bond for that. Um, any stormwater management issues that need to be addressed, and uh, later signage. Uh, there are representatives here for questions, um, or I'm happy to take questions as well. Thanks, Katie. Any questions, Wayne? Mr. Mayor, a um, couple of questions. Who owns Blaze Pizza? Blaze Pizza? Do they own it? Sure, yeah, Robert. Um, so we're the landlord for the property. Uh, we redeveloped the, um, the old F and F Tire Store mm -hmm. for Blaze Pizza, and we lease it at Blaze yeah. Pizza. And just to follow along, do you also control the Office Max? We do. We control the. the so you have the entire triangle. We do. The shorts. Right. We bought it in 2017. All right. Thank you. Wouldn't it be appropriate for us to table this? pending this um, recommendation 
bottom of page two, a complete staff recommendation <coughs> was provided once requested. Site, landscape, and architectural plans have been submitted. In other words, once you folks and the applicant have worked through your issues, then bring it back to us. Wouldn't that be the thing to do? Sure. It's uh, an option. It, it is an option. Uh, we were we know that you know they are on a, a, a tight timeline, so we were trying to make it possible to work out uh, between us. And you know, I think the way that the recommendation is written is that you know if we cannot come to an agreement, um, then we would come back before this body. But that's you know if if you're comfortable with that. Um, you know, we definitely want to work towards getting the best plan possible approved. Um, Based on if you're your your work currently with your work currently with the uh, applicant, do you feel that you can achieve what you're what you're trying to do? Is it doable? Um. So I think that there is an opportunity to make it work. Um, I, you know. The message has been that it, they believe that the site constraints will make it really difficult uh, <coughs> to have a site plan that has the building uh, relocated. I just I wanted to ask a question. Can you go back to the aerial right there? When I first give a pointer, I'm afraid it'll touch the screen. When I first heard about this, I was envisioning it was going to be over in this area. And I was wondering if that's a possibility or if that's, I mean, it's a, it's obviously a triangular bit of a challenging parcel, but yeah, that so was what I first envisioned when I heard the, the introduction of the plan. Yeah, so Office Max really sees the parking field in front of the store as their main parking field. Okay. And it actually took, uh, it was a six month negotiation to get us to get them to agree to release the out lot on the side of the building okay. as shown here. Um, uh, as I mentioned, we bought this site in 2017, and the intention all along has been to continue to develop outlots around there. And I think we might get, might be lucky getting an outlot, a small outlot, up in the northeast corner. Okay. Maybe in future years okay. if we identify a user. Okay. Um, but nothing as large as what we're proposing for um, Aspen Dental. And just to touch on uh, some, some things that Katie was referencing. You know, one of our challenges, we have many challenges here, um, but the site is constrained by the fact that Office Max has a lease in place and they control it for 10 more years. And so anything we do there, we can't unlock any value without their approval. Um, and, and some of their conditions were maintaining their pylon sign, which we know that the city wants that to go away. And we've agreed that once their tenancy is done, that that will go away. Um, but they also need to maintain these uh, the semi access for the deliveries. Okay. Uh, we've got the, the the parking constraint that was put in place by Aspen Dental. I'm sorry, by um, Blaze Pizza. And I know that's that's sort of an off-site issue, but I hope I think you'd all agree that the Aspen uh, the Blaze Pizza was a nice improvement to that old vacant M and tire. <laughs> and that's sort of what we're trying to do with this whole site is sort of as we work our way around, take a long-term approach, and continue to improve this site piece by piece as we go around. And I don't know if Office Max will stay in tenancy for the entire 10 years or if their, their business model may change before that, but we, we really have to plan for the next 10 years. Um, we're also trying to avoid any one-way park, parking aisles because we don't want to have people back out. Um, we're trying to maintain circulation. Um, Aspen Dental has a lot of senior citizens that come to the, the location, and so we think the parking circulation uh, should be as friendly as possible. We're also trying not to change the entrance at Highway 100 because that we're, we're, we don't want to have to go through a DOT approval which could slow down the process. So I know it's, I know this is long-winded, but there are a lot of site constraints that are placed upon this site, and we've been working with this model since fall, <coughs> uh, presenting draft plans uh, for staff's review, and we will continue to work with them after this evening to uh, respond to uh, KD's and staff's recommendations. But because of the timing of the Aspen lease, we really need this to keep moving forward so that we can meet their August delivery deadline. And I'll take any of the questions you have. Anyone else have questions? It sounded like you were gearing towards a motion, Wayne. I don't know if it was a formal motion or... Um, if it was, I would re retract it. I think that... Uh, Katie's response 
that uh, working with the applicant, if they can't come to an agreement, they'll come back here. And otherwise, uh, <coughs> on that basis, I would move approval. In Katie, we trust. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a second to that motion? A second. Okay. Uh, yes. Can we, can we just we brought some representatives that might want to respond to some of the other concerns that were brought up. Sure. Because I think we can maybe satisfy some of those this evening. Absolutely. Um, um, <coughs> from uh, Excel Engineering, I uh, wanted to talk about some of the building components. Sure. Um, well, I'll start with some of the, the low hanging fruit. I think one of the questions was is um, providing, um, you know, what is the glass going to be? Um, it is just clear glass. The blue on the renderings was just to reflect. Um, you know the the sky, um, and the and the I'll say the white shade for the spandrel was more more than anything else just to identify the spandrel. Um, <clears throat> there really isn't going to be a whole lot of difference uh, you know, from the spandrel to the, the clear glass, um, you know, on a normal normal day. Um, as far as the EFIS, um, the design we have presented here is a prototypical design that Aspen has spent 10 years um, developing. Um, we, we represent uh, Aspen Dental throughout the country. Excel does about 150 locations per year. Um, we have hundreds of these locations all over the country. Um, and they've um, intentionally, you know, used the EFIS because it is a practical material up high. Um, it, it allows us to get some great detail into the facade. Um, it also, you know, allows long-term uh, longevity to the material as long as it's up high enough. Um, as far as the, and then the other thing I'd like to just touch on a little bit is the, you know, reducing the spandrel. And uh, I, I agree we would like to reduce the spandrel as much as possible. Uh, but uh, the, one of the things that with this prototype look, we do have a lot of glazing on the exterior, which I think is is value to this building. But the interior circulations that we have inside the building, along with, um, you know, there's a lot of cabinetry that goes into this location, and we also have toilet rooms that are on the exterior, which create need for um, the spandrel. So, I guess those are kind of the reason that I take any questions you have on that. Sure, and yeah, I think we just want to see some samples of what those are going to look like, um, mm -hmm. and you know, and then I did pull some examples of, you know, other Aspen Dentals that don't use EFIS, um, uh, at least not you know as the primary component. Um, you know, like as you can see behind the whole area behind where the signage is, for example, on both of these buildings is <coughs> is not uh, EFIS. Um, <clears throat> and it is just a, you know, at this point, it's become pretty standard for uh, plan commission to not approve new structures to have EFIS on them. Can I, just so that I understand, so then in, in the entire <coughs> municipality, you don't allow EFIS on anything? Is that I, I'm just trying to understand where the what what part of the EFIS that you don't that um, I guess what part of the material is the, where where do you have your objection objection to that so, so the, I can address that the the primary objection to using EFIS especially as a primary building material uh, is that it it doesn't it doesn't hold up particularly well over time. Um, and so within, you know, uh, the matter of a, a several years, it, it becomes looking uh, discolored and worn and damages e more easily than other types of materials. Uh, and there are comparable, uh, you know, cost effective options available um, that we've not had any issue getting onto <coughs> other uh, buildings. So it's longevity is the issue that you're... Um, it's longevity, wrong. it's aesthetics, it's... Yeah, quality of, of materials. Okay. Alternate options. <coughs> um, as far as longevity, we have buildings in um, Manitowoc, in, um, I, I, I could provide 
photographs that you know are, are I'll say from they're eight nine years old with EFS that <coughs> look brand new. I guess I, I take objection to the fact that you know if EFS done right, it can last as long. I mean, and stucco has been around. You know, if you look in Europe, that's been around for for many many years for you know hundreds of years centuries okay. these are things we we shall work on we can discuss yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah was there anybody else that wanted to respond to any questions or You're good? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so we do have a motion and a second in front of us. If there's no other discussion, then I'm going to ask for a vote. All those, all those in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay, motion carries. Thank you. Um, we'll move on to item three, Polly's Pub and Eatery. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, wait for some people here. Uh, Paul, Paul Budiak and his uh, wife Christina here um, representing their, their business and uh, property located at 80th and um, 81st and Greenfield Avenue. And this was before the Planning Commission back in um, uh, June of 2018. Um, at the time, Paulie's was proposing an addition on the back side of the building, just for references, 81st Street here and Greenfield Avenue in the north. That addition was approved as part of a um, plan commission um, use approval and site landscaping and architectural review. Um, the addition was later determined not to be feasible, uh, cost effective. Um, the plan commission, though, as part of their approval, um, uh, wanted some additional consistency between the, uh, the back side of the building, the new addition, and the uh, remainder of um, uh, the existing building. And so here's what, here's what the building looked like in 2018 when the Planning Commission made its approval of the addition. Um, this is a, a rough uh, sketch uh, here in PowerPoint of where that addition would have been placed. It was, it was uh, intended to be a, 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 an addition for a kitchen expansion, bathrooms, uh, an interior, interior staircase up to the second floor. Um, some of the, um, the, plan, the, the plans that were approved basically had some, some new windows on the front of the building um, in the bar area, um, re kept the existing stucco on the exterior of the, of the walls. And then on, on the um, west elevation, um, the stucco was to remain. There were some new windows being added. Uh, there was some new siding on the addition. And then on the east elevation, there were some new windows, a new ramp, um, split face block and siding on the addition on that side. And on the back of the building, a split face uh, block uh, addition with some siding. Um, but uh, again, a lot of the stucco on the upper floor was to remain. Um, so the Planning Commission wanted, in their approval, the Planning Commission and Council wanted uh, a little bit more consistency between the proposed addition and the, um, and the bar building. And so after Paul determined that you know, this, this wasn't feasible, it, was, it wasn't cost effective, he, he refocused um, the design, and instead of increasing the footprint of the building, instead of putting that addition on the back, just focused on the existing um, building area and proposed to reclad the building with um, an LP um, siding, uh, cementitious board siding, like a lap <coughs> siding, um, pretty much on all four sides of the building. The new windows, the new doors around the building were still um, proposed. In fact, he went a little further and added some additional uh, roll-up windows and uh, second floor windows to the building. Um, he proposed niche ha siding on the base of the building, um, facing Greenfield Avenue and then wrapping around the east side of the building on the parking lot. Um, uh, the ramp was still being proposed, new doors and windows. Um, so just to com in comparison to sort of do the similar elevation view versus uh, what, what's happened here. And basically all of those things, the windows, the lap siding, the niche house, cementitious siding in the lower level, all that's been added. The part that hasn't been added is up above on the second floor, which remains to be stucco. But for consistency's sake, it has been repainted in a gray color to match the palette of 
the, uh, the, the other siding materials on the building and the, um, you know, the windows uh, give it a very transparent and open air look. Um, so the red line here basically represents, this is the roughly the edge of, on the front of the building facing Greenfield Avenue. Uh, the patio wraps around <coughs> to the west side, but there's the Nichiha um, applied siding here as proposed and approved. New windows, um, siding, the LP uh, cementitious siding up to the uh, extent of the first floor area. And above that remains the existing building stucco. You've also added new lighting um, and new windows on the second floor. Um, on the west side of the building, where the patio wraps around facing 81st Street, again, that cement siding, um, lap siding has been added on the first floor, as outlined in red here. Up above that is the existing building uh, stucco material, which has been painted to match. And on the east side of the building, I'm sorry I don't have a full picture here, but again, similar siding up to the extent of the first floor, and then up above that, um, the gray stucco siding, accent lighting's been added. So and after this, I think I've got some additional close-up pictures of this, but um, here's a before, you know, looking from Greenfield Avenue, and after, some different, you know, a nighttime view of that same Greenfield Avenue um, on the west side before and after. So I think the overall objective of consistency, uh, we, while the siding has been run up all the way, that would have been ideal, but uh, it hasn't been run up all the way. The original plan commission plans did not um, include siding all the way up. Um, we feel that it is um, much improved, and while not per the more recent January plan approval, uh, we are recommending approval of the um, of the amended architectural plans. And Mr. Gudiak and his his wife are here to um, offer any other um, <coughs> comments. Wayne. Mr. Mayor, uh, Steve, it sounds like you're willing to go along, but it's not quite what you would like. That's, that's, a a good, that's a good summary. I mean, I, ideally, this would have been, you know, the, the approved plan with, you know, siding all the way up was <coughs> a great, uh, a, a good plan, and uh, it, was, it was very aggressive. Um, you know, Paulie's you know, it, it, his plan was to invest quite a bit in this building, and um, uh, it, while it would have been great, and I suppose it could still be done, but it's going to come at a cost over over his budget, and um, we feel that the the changes that he's made are are consistent with, I guess, the original uh, plan commission's intent of um, you know approving a, a building. In that case, it was an addition plus some updates to the rest of the building, but. Um, in that original approval, I guess the stucco was still planned to be here. It's just in the subsequent revision, he went a little further and decided to run it all the way up. Um, again, it would have been, like you said, it would have been great to see it all the way up, but I, it, I think it's something that the way he's uh, painted the building, added the lighting features, the windows, I think it does, it does pull it all together. It is consistent in the um, initial intent and spirit of what plan commission had originally approved. Since it's a financial issue for the applicant, and we're really getting, from your perspective, the department's perspective, second best, <coughs> should we settle for second best? I don't know that it's second best. I mean, the, the, first, the first and original was, uh, I'm slow here, I should go through this. But, I mean, this was the original approval and what we were expecting out of this was not to side the entire building. Um, what we were intending was for some stronger roof line um, uh, tweaks to the building. And again, maybe siding the back of the building. And instead of being so heavy with split face, we were looking for some siding in the back side of the building. And then again, not, not covering up the existing building uh, with, with siding, but instead just he was going to just leave that sort of the same color, that brownish color. Instead he came back with a I guess a more harmonious plan. So I, I would say it's not, um, I guess I would look at it as a, as a nice alternative option. I think what he's, what he's come forward with, you know, in, in January was ideal, but you know, I don't think we're, I don't think we're, we're losing character. I think it's still an asset for Greenfield Avenue. It's still something to look at and say that's much improved. Well, I'm certainly yeah. not interested in driving a 
a uh, thriving business out of West Dallas, mm -hmm. but uh, given what you've just said, I would move approval. A second. We have a second also. Any questions or discussion? All right. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Thank, thank you guys very much for working with us and yeah. my ear not knowing what to do, so I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. <coughs> we will move on to item 4A and 4B. Uh, 2011 massage. Thank you. All right. Would it be appropriate to ask a question going into this subject? I don't know. It depends on what the question is. <laughs> uh, I will wait for your cue. <laughs> We've just gone through the ringer as a city with a massage parlor. I can't imagine how many dollars of police of city budget were spent on investigating how many uh, man hours of police work. Why are we turning right around and adding another massage parlor as opposed to isn't the city council looking at whether or not we should be doing this as a city? I would say they are, but I would also say that we've had negative press come out of bars we've had negative press come out of a lot of things but even with the negative press related to a proportion of whatever we're talking about there's still a fair number that are are honest business people that sure. are just running and i i mean i think you can't find someone guilty of a crime before they've committed it and i'm sure that the i mean the council's aware of some of the problems that have been um you know, attached to businesses like these, but I don't think that that's enough to deny it. I think it's just enough to request accountability and that they're good residents and good businesses in the community. And the special use does give the city um, more ability and control to slow down the process. Before, prior to 2017, you know, massage business was a permitted use, and they could just they could apply for an occupancy permit, and if it met the, the zoning, they were, you know, they were in. Um, now there's a little bit more oversight. <coughs> um, we send this out for technical staff review and comment. Our, our police department's involved, and, and several other departments. So there's, it slows down the process, you know, for you know just just opening your doors and, and starting business. So there is definitely some additional oversight than now than, than we had prior to 2017. And police are very very vigilant yeah. too. Yeah, I certainly agree with the mayor relative to the fact you can't paint everybody in the same business with the same brush. I mean, that's, that's obvious. But I think that we really have to hearken back to doing the due diligence and uh, making sure that the, the police leadership understand what we're getting into. I'm sorry. No, it's good. And it's my understanding that the police uh, hold interviews with the applicants and do a, a thorough background investigation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So, uh, 2011 Massage is proposing to go into the space at 735 <coughs> South 108th Street, or Highway 100. It used to be a mattress store, and now they want to turn it into a massage business. So, they offer various different styles of massage. Uh, that they, they want to have up to three masseuses, and they're going to build out four different rooms. Their hours are Monday through Saturday, 9 to 10, 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Sunday, 10 to 9. And for, their zoning is C3. Uh, they're a special use pretty much across the board. Uh, their public hearing will be February 19th. <coughs> and who will conduct that? This body or the Common Council? The Common Council. Common Council. Common Council. Council. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So these are their interior plans, uh, almost 1,700 total square feet. And they're going to build out a uh, reception space for massage rooms and a bathroom. And they are required to have five parking spaces, but there are 16 available, so parking isn't an issue here. Um, one uh, condition that, that we are putting on, the, <coughs> on this special use is for the, uh, the non-conforming pole sign to be removed. So the property owner has requested up to five years to remove the pole sign. 
Um, I understand this is a bit unprecedented. It's, it's usually a uh, plan commission gives two years and has given as much as four years um, to to remove something. So, uh, but we've spoken with the property owner. They, they say that the timeline is largely based on their improvement schedule. They've put, been putting a lot of money into the building, renovating the interior. They're gonna be repaving the parking lot soon and fixing the facade of the building. So they have a lot scheduled out for the next few years so they're asking for a bit more time to remove the pole sign so it's up to the plan commission to decide how long they want to give them so uh, really our only condition of approval is is to remove <coughs> that non-existent or not the existing non-conforming pole sign okay. we've worked with this property owner previously too on the plaza 108 property and so they're not opposed to you know um, putting up monument signs. They just they're just asking for a little bit more time. They've they've actually removed a pole sign on their Plaza 108 property and installed a compliant monument sign there. So um, they understand. They just you know, based on their capital improvement schedule, as Tony mentioned, they need a little bit more time than usual. You done? All done. Sorry. <laughs> Any questions from the commission? Should we really take um, that long to remove signs? Well, we could probably have it down in about five minutes, but well, that's I mean, why I was yeah. <laughs> I guess I, I'm but just there's that yeah, there's some existing years. tenant tenants within the building um, that are going to be util utilizing the. They've, they've got a commitment from the owner to utilize the sign. So utilize. Apparently, it. they've actually made some updates to it in the past year or so. Okay. They, they don't want to just take it all down. Okay. Even though they, it, you're right, I mean, it could come down pretty quick, right? I mean, okay. you'd borrow the mayor's car. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One snow plow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Is there a reason that the sign is attached? Because the sign isn't even adjacent to where the business is going in. Is there a reason these are tied together that way? Yeah, when we, when we look at special uses, we look at the entire property, okay. not just the, the one tenant space. Okay, thank you. Is there any intention to do any exterior work other than maybe signage, or have you had that discussion with them? Just signage. I was going to ask about maybe some improved landscaping uh, normally I know this property actually does a decent job of okay. keeping up lots of flowers yeah. and maybe that picture is just yeah. a bad time right I think they've actually won a beautification award I mean yeah you wouldn't tell by this picture but I mean when that's when things are in bloom <laughs> sure. they've got quite an extravagant okay uh, good because that's obviously a very visible visible core I think some of their longer term tenants are actually out there doing the work which is pretty pretty cool so great yeah we have a motion. Move for approval. I'll second. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor? I would like to uh, request that the signage be dealt with in, within two years. In two years? Mm-hmm. Do you want to amend your motion? Or do you want to counter his offer? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> um, I, th I think five years seems long to me, um, but two years seems a little short. But that's just me. About three and a half. I was going to say, what if we meet in the off. middle? <laughs> three and a half years. <laughs> so, um, I mean, is four, I think. three? Four. Like, what's the average cost to remove it? I know they're talking about it's a cost issue. Mm -hmm. Do you know? Average. It's probably not removing it, but it's building the monument sign. Replace, replace it, okay. it, right? Yeah, the removal, yeah, wouldn't be much other than, you know, their commitment to tenants. Mm -hmm. um, but um, Which is a year-long commitment, yeah. I believe. Okay. So. Four? Yeah, maybe three or four. Is it Jeff? Yeah. Yes. We have two leases that require the use of a sign. And somehow in our minds, we thought that this is a very minimal pylon sign. We thought we were okay for it. Um, one is the Republican Party of Wisconsin, or Milwaukee. And the other is the Granite Shop. And we have recently been putting in money into repairing some of the light bulbs, uh, the wiring, and um, 
<coughs> so we're kind of tied into some leases. And uh, one of those leases, I think, is it five years? That's the one of the big reasons we asked for five. Is there a is the Republican Party just a federal elections office for 2020, or is it going to be a longer term? They might no, they have, a, I think, an 18 month. Okay. They could renew, but you know, it's in a, it's not like we can never find a way to put up a monument sign, and because that building is right up against the road, it's very low visibility for people to find that yeah. location. <laughs> so we have, we have a motion with five and the second in five years, so. I mean, yes, I would move to do it with the five if you've got leases and things that are tied to it. But I understand how would you want it removed sooner. Can we put in a condition of if you have the vacancies that you would agree to take it down? You know, it, the tenant should vacate? Yeah, obviously we don't want that to happen, but if something, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah we could agree to that, but. Uh, something like that. Mm -hmm. But still, you know, our, our, we, we will be coming back with um, a request for permits for the front of the building for the hair salons. You know, we're working on improving the look of the building. Okay. Um, little money put into that. We've uh, redone the, interior of the building. We would really like to do the parking lot, but it's going to be the parking lot or is it going to be the, you know, mm -hmm. taking down the signage or I'm, I'm not sure. I would really like to do a parking lot, but. Yeah. Okay. You comfortable with that? Yes. You got that down? Uh, so <laughs> so five-year on the signage removal, but we'll remove sooner if they vacate? If the tenants vacate, vacation allows it something along those lines yeah we'll have to well because i would think also if tenants vacate they might be back here anyway with another special use permit or something like that yeah it's true possible yeah <clears throat> okay any other discussion all in favor say aye. aye aye anybody opposed aye one opposed three to one motion carries <clears throat> all right um we will move on then to item 5A, 5B. Thank you, Mayor. All right, I'm going to be deja vu. So, <laughs> uh, next massage business coming in uh, called Asian Massage, proposing to locate at 1405 South Highway 100, 108 Street. Um, they are just a few blocks south on the same side of the street. So they are renovating the former Wisconsin Vision store into a massage business, and they also have various styles of massage. They are proposing to build three partial height rooms and have two massage chairs there. And their hours will be Monday through Sunday, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Their zoning is also C3, and their public hearing will also be on February 19th. This is a look at their interior plans. They have 983 total square feet. And like I said before, they'll have three massage rooms, a reception space, two massage chairs, and a bathroom. Uh, they are required to have only three parking spaces, and they have 38 available, so they meet parking code. The condition of approval that we're putting on this property is for them to construct a four-sided refuse enclosure, uh, just to screen the dumpsters appropriately from other uses. All of their neighbors also have four-sided refuse enclosures, so we just want them to... to uh, adhere to the screening and, and have a similar structure as their neighbors. That's it for that one. Any questions? Did you say the rooms were? Partial height. Partial height. OK. So they, so they don't go up to the ceiling. Okay. Mm -hmm. There are no questions. Do we have a motion? I'll move to approve. We have a second. A second. All right. Any other discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Aye. Three to one, motion. We'll move on to items 6A and 6B. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the uh, applicant is here tonight. Um, I think he was here some earlier, but um, this is a uh, location at 2248 South 108th Street, uh, former uh, <coughs> barbershop or salon uh, with uh, four apartment units upstairs, four one bedroom apartments. So it's a mixed use property on Highway 100 and just north of Lincoln. Um, across from the Lincoln Plaza. This is a street view picture of the uh, of the building. And the ground floor, uh, there's a proposed uh, grocery store and uh, a liquor store um, uh, proposed for that for the site. The upper apartments would still remain. Um, the, uh, the zoning is commercial, C4 regional commercial, which does permit um, convenience stores and so on. It's just the, the fact that there's alcohol beverage sales, that's what triggers the uh, special use review um, by, by zoning ordinance. So uh, there will be a special use public hearing um, on February 19th. Um, it was introduced before the License and Health Committee last night. They didn't take action. It was simply just introduced, passed along to Planning Commission for the site review uh, and overview. Um, and then ultimately the, the public hearing will be in February, mid-February. So the hours are uh, seven days a week from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Um, there are about 15 parking stalls available on the site, maybe maybe one or two more depending on how you, know, how you park here. But um, uh, so it, it will meet the, uh, the parking requirement for both the residential component of the building as well as the commercial component on the ground floor. Um, the, uh, uh, Staff, there has been no site plan submitted with this. There is an, a site plan on file from 1978. So what we're asking for as a condition of the approval is that, that a new site plan and landscaping plan be submitted, more or less <coughs> freshen up what's out there. There's been some changes over time, but um, in terms of what, what we're asking for, uh, within the staff report we alluded to um, just better parking lot details, removing of wheel stops um, along the south property line, installation, you know, saw cutting and installation of a uh, landscape area along the south, um, you know, west and east sides of the parking lot area, identifying the location of uh, uh, the refuse container. Right now the, the, the refuse is, uh, I think, somewhere back here. Uh, we'll always, you know, require a four-sided enclosure and uh, details of that. So in addition to that, um, a floor plan being um, submitted, and all this should be designed by uh, ideally a design professional an architect the best delineate uh, what's what's proposed and uh, we find that the most you know success comes from uh, when, when something's been professionally designed and um, presented uh, to uh, the planning and uh, building inspections for permitting so um, the applicant's aware of that he just was reluctant to go ahead and I guess make that investment until he had some I think more assurance from um, Planning Commission and perhaps the Common Council on, on the licensing transfer from 81st Street out to this location here. So, um, but uh, if if approved by the uh, Planning Commission and Council, he would uh, then um, proceed with an architectural plan to uh, take the next step. So, what we're asking for in our recommendation is that we are recommending approval of the of the use and um, uh, subject to a site landscaping plan being submitted to the, uh, the Department of Development, um, basically identifying the floor plan details, locations of various merchandise within the building, um, the parking lot details, the additional uh, areas for landscaping, um, the plant materials being uh, something that our city forester reviews, making sure that it's something uh, durable enough to withstand uh, the wear and tear of the area. Um, and, and yet aesthetic enough to, to provide some buffer to uh, street frontages, neighborhood to the east, and, and property, properties to the south. <coughs> uh, refuse area being indicated, four-sided enclosure, and then there are some minor exterior uh, changes being, uh, that will be taking place within the building. Uh, some of those will be uh, translated to the outside. There's going to be a new door added on the south elevation, and a door on the east elevation is going to be closed given some of the changes within the building. So we'll want um, exterior details of those changes um, for, for review. So we're asking for plan commission's acceptance to, to work with the applicant and uh, move forward with this. Um, 
I guess if we don't come to agreement, it would come back to you. Um, and um, aside from that, that's what I that's what I have. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, I move approval. What do you want a second? <laughs> I'll second. <laughs> Any discussion? Can I just ask what mm -hmm. is there something in the commercial portion now? What did you uh, say? It was it was Marinello's. Marinello's like hair salon. salon. It was yeah. Marinello's. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I was trying to picture it. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Thank you. Sure. sure. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Item seven. Lamar Advertising. Thank you for being here. Okay. So item seven is a plan appeal for uh, an existing freestanding sign, um, which is an existing non-conforming sign uh, located at 1721 South 100th Street. Uh, the applicant is proposing to do some improvements to the sign that do not comply with our sign code. Um, it includes uh, taking it from, you can see there's four, um, currently four poles. Um, it would be a monopole structure. Um, so it would be 80 feet in height and it would be 700, or sorry, excuse me, 672 square feet. Um, this, the applicant is seeking this variance um, as a reaction to the sound wall that was built. Um, as you can see, prior to the sound wall, the sign was very visible, and, and after the sound wall, um, it is much less visible. So our existing sign code um, versus what they are proposing um, do not match up in several ways. Um, there's no masonry base, there's no landscaping proposed. Uh, it exceeds our maximum square footage by a large amount, by 622 square feet. Uh, it exceeds maximum height by 70 feet. And uh, this sign would be entirely changeable copy, and our code only allows for 35% of the sign area to be changeable copy. Um, and so, <laughs> while we understand that the sound wall did change the effect of the sign um, from the highway, um, when we're talking about what types of things to consider in a variance, um, you know, those include that they will not result in an undue concentration of signage. Uh, here it's over 600 square feet of what's permitted. Um, if it is of a unique and exceptional design or style, it's a pretty standard uh, billboard. And um, finally, if there are any site difficulties that make it so that it is not visible from the adjacent frontages. Um, and you know, this where that yellow circle is uh, would be a great place for a legal monument sign that would be visible from all frontages of the, of the property. Um, so with that, staff does recommend denial of this sign plan appeal. Mr. Um, Mayor, I move approval of the, de of the denial. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Uh, I do believe that Barbara from Lamar is here. here. If there's any questions. Are there any questions? Okay. So, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the denial carries. All right. Thanks. Um, we'll go on to item eight. All right. Item eight is uh, a signage plan appeal for temporary signage, which is. Um, an unusual request. Um, uh, however, it was discussed with our building inspections department that it would be best to have them come through an approval process, um, just to have that all, um, you know, to make sure that you guys reviewed it and are okay with it, and uh, that it did go through an appropriate process. So this is for the uh, for the 70th Street redevelopment project, the old Alice Thomas office building. And uh, again, so looking at the temporary sign code versus uh, what they're proposing is that our temporary sign 
uh, <coughs> section allows for one temporary sign that's either single or double faced uh, for a maximum area of 32 square feet. If it's a freestanding sign at a maximum height of five feet um, and typically issued for 180 days with the option to renew for 90 day periods up until a certain percentage of vacancies are filled on the site. Um, the COBOL is requesting that they be allowed to have three signs. Uh, one of them would be, um, the freestanding sign would be on, this is like further south on 70th Street. Um, and then the other two would be, for now, would be wall signs, uh, kind of in an L shape here at the corner of Washington and 70th Street. Um, and they all of the signs would look like this image right here. Um, so these signs are 64 square feet each, uh, and the freestanding sign is, uh, would be 10 feet tall. And they are requesting that these be issued, that the permit be issued for a year. Um, so, you know, when staff was considering this, the, the fact that the signage is temporary and will at some point be removed, um, and given the large size of the overall development project, <coughs> Um, and the fact that these at some point will be, you know, separate properties um, and that they will be in contact with staff if they make any changes to where the location of these are as the construction and demolition project moves forward. Um, staff recommends approval of these temporary signs. Even though these are temporary and but they fall outside the guidelines. What kind of issues do you expect to have as a department with others coming forth and saying, give me a variance? This precedence thing always rears this ugly head. Just wondering how you'll deal with that, other than saying this is temporary. So I, I think some things to consider are that, uh, you know, while consistency is important as a body, um, one decision does not does not um, force you to continue to make that decision. Um, every, every one should be uh, considered independently um, and reviewed on um, you know, the considerations at hand. And I do think that, um, you know, typically there are um, four lease signs that go up in the city that do not get permitted. Um, the reason that they're coming before uh, the plan commission is because they are they're a si a pretty sizable uh, signs. Um, typically, the four lease signs are permitted to go up, and if there's not a permit with them, there's you know they're not forced to take them down for that reason. Um, Mr. Mayor, this is a major development in our city, as we know. Um, I would I would recommend approval. Thank you. Is there a second? Yeah, I'd second. Okay. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Right. Right. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item nine will be Apostle Presbyterian. Thank you, Mayor. I missed the first and second. <coughs> yeah. Did you guys get it? Second. Who was that on the last item? Was it Wayne? The first motion? Move. Wayne moved. Dave seconded. Thank you. David seconded. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Apostles Presbyterian Church is proposing to update their sign on the corner of 76 and Orchard. And with us tonight, we've got uh, uh, Pastor Kathy Manthe, Linda Hall, um, Pablocki Sign Company, and then uh, Dean Pushnate, um, members of the, uh, of the church. Um, so um, the, uh, the removal of a, this is a very, very old sign. It's been there for decades. Um, and uh, it's, it's time to, uh, the, the church has decided that it, it wants to seek updating this with a new monument sign. Um, the issue before us is that um, while the size of the sign is definitely, you know, the area of the sign is 24 square feet, it's about half the size of what could otherwise be put there. Uh, 50 square feet would be a max. Um, it's definitely lower than the 10 foot maximum height. It's at five and a half feet. Um, the issue that we have is that the electronic message center is roughly about over 50% of what uh, it's over 50% of, of uh, the 35% that would be allowed. So the city sign ordinance allows 35% of the sign face to be electronic message centers. In this case, um, my math is correct. I'm, I'm looking at about 57 square feet of the, of the sign face. So 
it's over in terms of its um, total size allowance for the electronic display. And then secondly, uh, the city sign ordinance allow requires a, a masonry base. Um, it doesn't set, specify specifically the, the type of masonry. It could be brick, it could be block, it could be a veneer, it could be a, a landscape block uh, surround. Um, but it does require, there's a masonry component to the, uh, uh, to the sign base. It needs to be at least two feet high. So the appeal request um, is to um, uh, basically install you know, a new sign to replace the, the other one. Uh, uh, major, major technology upgrades, um, you know, a new color, um, but, but with a, a metal base and with a, um, a, a sign display in excess of the 35%. Um, so uh, from, from planning's perspective, um, I mean, it's just another, another look of what's, what's there today versus what's, what's planned. Um, and you can see that you know, in, in their defense and proposing this, they're, they're simply trying to replicate as close as possible what they have today um, in the new sign, just with some technology upgrades. But nevertheless, I mean, it does require a signage permit. And the, in the event of a signage permit, there is sign review. And when a business or an organization makes an investment in a, in a sign or an alteration, whether it be a building or a structure or a sign, um, that's the time where we would like conformance with our with our ordinance. So what we're asking um, uh, is <coughs> perhaps for some consideration from the Planning Commission to take a look at, and we had talked a little bit about this earlier today with, um, with church members um, here tonight, but about reducing the size of the uh, electronic message center uh, display, um, adding a cap feature or perhaps even increasing the height of the cabinet slightly to, um, again, create a little bit more sign area, which would then bring that electronic message display possibly into conformance uh, with, our, with our sign code. And then to um, utilize a masonry veneer base or perhaps a landscape block base around the, around the base of the sign. Um, one example, um, just relatively close by on 76 in Lapham is um, at the uh, First United Church, um, they, I guess, worked with us on a message display center. I mean, these are not the same uh, dimensions or anything, but um, it's it's a just relatively close by example. They they offered, I guess, on this sign, they they added a cap feature, which happened to be sort of a peak roof line feature. Um, they increased the size of the cabinet above the electronic display. And thereby, when we measure the sign area, we take the, the general rectangle around, uh, you know, around this, and that's what the sign area is. And then you, you measure the, the area of the display. And as long as that display is 35% or less than the overall sign, sign area, it's compliant. And this happened, they happened to reuse an existing sign, uh, previous sign base. So they, they kind of lucked out in that respect. So they already had a masonry base. But we worked with other, um, businesses in town, um, each one um, has different constraints, um, but I, I think in its application over the years um, that we've had the, the sign ordinance, I think we've, we've always sort of come to some um, workable solution, um, and um, we hope to do the same here with, with uh, Apostles. Uh, I think we're just, we're running into a little bit of a, you know, obviously there's, there's budget issues, and, um, and they're here tonight to explain you know their point of view and what they like to achieve, but um, for for the reasons <coughs> stated earlier, with nonconformance with the sign ordinance, we're recommending denial of the proposal as is. And if I could just make one note on the percentage, so the total square footage is thirty six point five six, so thirty six and a half, um, and then our EMC is thirteen, um, about thirteen and a half. The overall percentage of the sign face in relation to the sign is 37%. So we are still over that 35%, um, but we're at 37 of the entire sign face. Um, okay. I may be way off, but I mean, I, just, I guess that, in terms of... That, I, that yeah. we calculated today, so that okay. we didn't have this morning. All right. All right. I, I guess I'm just looking at the, you know, the three, you know, if we were to take the overall area of the sign face, I mean, I guess 
you know, 3 inches plus 2.7 inches plus 10 inches. I guess that's what I was, I was, this portion of the sign is what I was factoring as the overall sign phase. The cat, this portion down here, I guess I was, I wasn't calling that signage, I was calling that like just base. Um, so I guess if we take this area here, I was coming up with like 24 square feet of which there's about, I think, 13, I think we agree on the display size. Um, so I was coming up with like 57, you know, this is 57% of, of this area. Um, okay. So I think maybe where we're, where we're off is maybe down here. The base. Um, yeah. Okay. So typically, and that must be a miscommunication between okay. um, with our permitting department. Okay. We've, I've been advised that it's the sign square footage and then it's the percentage in relation. Okay. <coughs> so you're, you're not considering the full cover as part of that? Right. Um, yeah, I mean, that's so I guess the way our sign ordinance works is, I guess we're always looking at like base, middle, top in terms of the form of a sign. Um, so the, the first two feet is usually the masonry part. Um, and then after that, you get into the, you know, the sign display or cabinet. Um, and then usually there's a, perhaps a cap feature integrated with that, so um, as the top. So um, we're, uh, you know, we're open to working with you guys on trying to find a solution. Um, and if plan commission so desires to, to hold this item and maybe give us a, another chance at compliance or getting a little closer um, would be the idea. Unless, you know. I'd just be curious what, because you had mentioned that you talked about these items today, what was the reaction or is there any? Um, yeah. Well, the main concern, the main concern with the, based on the feedback that Steve had given us prior to today, um, the main concern with the other options that we investigated is all of them, especially the masonry base, um, starts to change the bu budget, which potentially makes this project not no longer feasible. Uh, so as you can imagine, the church wants to upgrade not only the aesthetic of the sign, but also how much they can connect with the community. So right now, I'm sure you're all very aware, manual reader boards, you can only get so much content up per day, and they do take, they're a lot more labor intensive to update. Obviously with this, um, in any given day, they can maximize the amount of content that they're sharing, and also the amount of awareness that they're spreading on what events they have going on that week. Um, the other concern is right now we're trying to, for budget reasons, to reuse the existing base. Um, so if we, if we leave the sign as is, but then add a taller top cabinet and also add masonry, as we stand right now, although square footage we've reduced, weight-wise we've greatly increased because the digital displays are quite heavy. So the, we're right on the edge right now of being able to reuse that existing footing which saves a lot of money. We don't have to excavate and pour a new foundation. If we switch over to some of uh, the recommendations, unfortunately, we're likely going to have to pour, excavate and pour a new foundation, and the budget um, becomes a little more restrictive then. Wait. If I could just add something oh. on behalf of uh, Apostle. Uh, I, uh, I'm here tonight uh, because I'm on, a, on the budget committee. I'm here with Kathy Manthe, our pastor, and Linda Hoon from, uh, from Session. And uh, uh, it's obviously very important to us because I'm not sitting in my living room watching my 85-inch TV right now. Uh, and uh, I'm blind in my right eye. I need a big TV. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, uh, uh, as was discussed, uh, we're trying to upgrade our appearance at the church. You, you've driven by the old sign, that we're, we're a block south of here, if you go south on 76th Street, you see it. Mm -hmm. uh, over the years, we've received so many positive messages on that sign. We've had people call us from Oshkosh saying, hey, I'm driving down 76th Street, tell me about this. But, but lately, uh, the, the sign is just not functional, uh, and we want to upgrade. But our big concern is this. Uh, our friends at Pablocki, which have been wonderful, and it's a West Dallas business, by the way, we're stick sick in the city. Uh, they, they, they've told us it's going to cost $4,000 to do this. 
And I understand the purpose behind the planning committee. I was a city employee for many years. I, I love the planning commission here. Uh, but you tell Walgreens, oh, we're gonna upgrade you $4,000. Oh, is that all? Here you go. Uh, you tell Home Depot, $4,000. Uh, okay, here you go. You tell Apostle Church is $4,000. That's five or 6% of our annual contributions. Uh, it's not feasible for us, uh, honestly. And uh, I just met with Kathy and Linda today and I gave them the good news here that I just got back on the Budget and Finance Committee. In the last four years, our contributions have been down 31%. Doesn't mean we're dying. It means that, well, I mean, some people are going, unfortunately. Uh, uh, older folks are leaving, like your churches. There's a lot of challenges. We've been in a community here for longer than there's been in West Dallas. Uh, since 1900 or so, our church has been in the community. And we've been great community partners, especially since uh, Pastor Kathy's come on board here. And I think she's worked with City Hall on a number of initiatives. Uh, we currently uh, have, have been assisting the school district and West Dallas Hospital with shared journeys. Uh, they were looking for a place to house uh, uh, their, their newborn uh, high school girls who become early mothers. Uh, we helped them get through school. We just talked at the last session meeting about uh, bringing in the school district and having them use our whole kitchen area for a class where 25 high school kids, if they go to this class, they save a year on their education at WCTC or MATC. Uh, you know, we've been great community partners and, and, and so has the city. I mean, you allow us to use a parking lot on Sunday and we greatly, greatly appreciate it and respectfully we're asking for a variance. Thank you. Wayne, did you have a question? Uh, yes. Um, Pastor Kathy and Chief Dean uh, are longtime friends, and I certainly uh, can read the write up and hear the presentation that Dean just made. And yet, we have the issue of the plan commission, the plan department, wanting to continue to work with the applicant. And I'm wondering if, if we do, in fact, table this, if we can get the parties together and see if we can <clears throat> nudge this a little closer to a win-win. Is there a middle? <laughs> We're definitely open to continuing to evolve this. There's gotta be a middle. See, I mean, I don't design signs, but I would think, I would think it would be doable that well, Mr. Mayor, with that uh, response, I would move that we table and have the parties get together and figure out this solution. Is there a second to I that? Second that. There's a second. Okay. Any discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you in February. <laughs> We'll move to item 10, city uh, right away, 113. Yes. Um, anyone here uh, representing? All right, Ian, I gotta take off and meet my son. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> How are you doing? Good to see you, Dean. Let's see take you. care. Take care. Is anyone here representing uh, 113th Street? Uh, 113th Street? No? Hello. No? All right. Um, Move to deny. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> yeah. What, what item are you guys here for? No, I'm just yeah, okay. fun. Yep. Oh, thanks right. for hanging out with us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're, okay, we 113th go. Street. Let's try to advance here. Here we go. So, um, at last uh, uh, earlier, well, earlier this year, uh, we received a request from um, the property owner of 100. 1218 West Mitchell Street, which is an industrial property, uh, central transport company uh, that uh, would like to um, request vacation and discontinuance of a portion of unapproved right of way uh, between, on 113th Street uh, between Lapham and Mitchell. So by unapproved, I mean there was never any pavement there. It's dirt, grass, it looks like a field. Um, and probably with some trees. Uh, but um, so they're, they're requesting a, a discontinuance of that. And what that means is that, um, you know, there's going to be a public hearing process. It was introduced to Common Council last night um, before Planning Commission this evening. 
and yep. and the um, uh, public hearing uh, when it would be scheduled before uh, March 3rd, 2020, 20, uh, 2020. and um, basically this area here is a, a 60 foot wide by 580 foot stretch of city owned right of way um, or public right of way, uh, just shy of an acre of land. And if vacated by the common council, half of it, 30 feet, would go to this property owner here, and the other half would go to the condominium property owner owners to the to the west. There's actually two two ownerships here, uh, so and then they could, you know, use the land however they saw fit. But the rationale for the the applicant um, why they want uh, the additional land would be for future expansion of their uh, facility here. Um, on a bigger picture look of the same area, the same area we were just looking at, just on a bigger scale, this is Highway 100, north-south corridor, and this is Greenfield Avenue, the Union Pacific Railway and the uh, city's crosstown connector bike trail are here. Uh, but on a, on a larger note, the city is currently always sought um, additional means of cross access, uh, both uh, north-south cross access, parallel to Highway 100 on both sides of Highway 100. So over here, we're always looking at for opportunities between properties um, to uh, get north and south. This happens to be one unimproved portion of right-of-way, which given potential future development in this area may become a valuable asset to have. Um, so I think it, it might be a little short-sighted to just discontinue this at this point in time um, until um, we continue to evolve the Highway 100, which is going to be kind of the next frontier in terms of development. We're we've currently hired a, uh, a, a, a land use study and marketing study of the corridor, and um, we'll have um, that, that presentation at a future uh, soon-to-be uh, plan commission meeting, and Gensler will come in and, and give their presentation and uh, recommendations, uh, one of which happens to be better connections um, parallel and along the corridor, not only between properties, but uh, the stretches along that area. So for those reasons, um, you know, we're recommending, staff is recommending denial uh, at tonight's meeting, and uh, we have, I guess, a similar recommendation uh, be before the council for their consideration. Mr. Mayor, I'd move uh, approval for the denial. Second. There's a motion, there's a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Item 11 is the vacation and discontinuance of 59th Street. Thank you, Mayor. So another vacation here. This is for the uh, South 59th Street in between National Avenue and Greenfield Avenue, but not quite as far as Greenfield Avenue. Uh, it goes just, just as far as this alleyway right here. So this is outside of, in between Kegels Inn and Public Table. So uh, the vacation means that the city would give up this <coughs> way for those two restaurants to take ownership of, of the street. And uh, as you may know, over the summer, they uh, put out some tables and a stage, and they've been pretty successful thus far. And, and now uh, they're working on making an ice rink, an ice skating rink. So um, I actually have a picture from earlier today of them working on it. Mm -hmm. They're on a time crunch right now because they have an event tomorrow. So they're just sprinkling it with What's water the all day long. And all night long. He says he's out there all two in the morning. Uh, so the schedule for consideration, it was introduced to Common Council yesterday by Alderman Vitale and requires uh, approval today. And then their public hearing is on March 3rd. Uh, staff recommends approval of this vacation. I would move to approve. Second. Okay. There's a motion and a second. Any other discussion? I, they're not obviously here to discuss, but do they have more permanent plans then? Or is that is that going to come back before us if they're going to do something? That's going to be the next step. We're going to be working with yeah. them on easements and okay. fire, fire hydrants, hydrants and right there, and, and yeah. maybe future programming. You know their their ideas. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, there's no other discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Item 12. Survey summary. Whoops. Oh, yeah. I didn't put in there. That's okay. Over there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
wanted to give you guys an update on um, uh, after each plan commission meeting in 2019 we sent out a basically a customer satisfaction type of a survey for a lack of a better term um, to anyone that was on the agenda and there were six yes or no questions with an option to leave any additional comments uh, a rating of the process the whole plan commission process, so from application through uh, you know, approval uh, of poor to excellent, and then additional requests for any any more feedback that they had. Um, so our response rate was 21%. Uh, there were 14 out of 65 respondents, which is not you know terribly great, but it's common. Yeah, I think it's pretty common. Yeah, a lot of people ignore survey requests. So. Um, uh, interestingly, uh, for all of our yes or no questions, 100% uh, of the respondents said yes to all six of those questions, and on average, left about th there were about three comments per question left. Um, so this is just a sample of some of those things. Um, you know, were you treated with courtesy and respect? Uh, yes, excellent staff, very courteous and helpful. Um, I think there were lots of call-outs to um, Steve's awesomeness in there. Um, <laughs> 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 um, and uh, so, yes, did you receive clear and accurate information? Was staff helpful in answering your questions? Did you feel welcome when you came into the office? Uh, were you in contact with staff prior to submission of the application? And if you answered yes to five, was that helpful to you? Um, so, pretty positive feedback overall. The overall rating of the process from excellent to poor, fair, good to excellent. Uh, 14 of the, res or 12 of the respondents said excellent and two said good. Um, and then there were just some additional comments that people had left. Uh, most of them were positive. Um, you know, I think the only one that is maybe somewhat constructive is, um, you know, some of the, some submittals seem limited in their submittal. Um, but otherwise, uh, I think, you know, this was a, so this feels like bragging and it's kind of awkward. But <laughs> but it's, Run with it. <laughs> um, so where did that one go? Like, um, you rate out A plus against any of them. Um, so anyway, it was overall, it was really good feedback. We have been talking though about, um, you know, if moving forward, if there's better questions that we could be asking or different questions that we should be asking asking to get um, any more, um, you know, feedback that can help us make changes that are necessary if, if they, are, you know, are necessary. Um, so if you have any thoughts or comments about the types of questions that you'd like to see us asking folks uh, who come through this process, please let us know um, and we'll try to incorporate them for the 2020 version of this as we go forward. Great. Number I mean, four. Um, the f front office was very welcoming. What about the back office? <laughs> <laughs> well, most of when, when people co come into the development office, they usually see Gail and Barb first, yeah. so. <laughs> but hopefully, hopefully also nice. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. Most that, days. That's question seven for next year, <laughs> or for this year. Good. Well, thank you for sharing that. I'm assuming we don't vote on that, so. No, it's just, uh, just an item. Yeah, so then can we have a motion to adjourn? All in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed and want to stay here longer? <laughs> All in favor? We did, okay. We're adjourned, thank you. Thank you.